All right, everyone, welcome back to not to the road to Paris. The road to Paris is finished, as you all know, but this is exactly what we wanted to flow into our new series that we're doing with the AVP uh, that we're going to take also to Volleyball World. This combo right here, the Florida Man combo. Bing, bing. Go Knowles, go Heat. Go Heat. This is a Florida podcast now. <laughs> uh, this is called Beach Access, so we are trying to... Still build up the characters, the events, the storylines from everything in between the Olympics because I think that um, we focus too much on the Olympics and we sort of ignore all the in-betweens. Yep. And now we get to build up all the in-betweens. And so we got uh, a pretty big one it's coming up here, Mr. Kyle Friend. Some would say the biggest, actually. Some would say the some biggest. The, the biggest. granddaddy, the Wimbledon, the Manhattan Beach Open. Winner gets their name on the Manhattan Beach Pier. Last year, for the first time, I think – Probably the most long overdue winner of Manhattan, yeah. Taylor Crab, and then I mean Taylor Sander wasn't long overdue for sure, <laughs> but yeah. they got their name on the pier. I thought uh, the beach volleyball world is right having Taylor Crab's name on the pier. Yeah, I think it's time, right? I think he's played enough volleyball and excelled <laughs> at the highest level, and you know he's won ton of events he's won so many events so this time with jake Gibb, now with his time with sandy uh and his brother's been on the pier and so you know it's time to get a little payback i think yep. for for the bug and you know he got his name on the pier which is great and then you know on the women's side betsy and julia get their name on the pier and I, when you were saying someone who's long overdue my first thought was betsy flint betsy flint <laughs> she had been in so many uh, finals yeah. of the manhattan open as has kelly chang Right. Kelly Chang's been in two finals. The last time she played Manhattan, her and Betsy were up 13-10 in the third set against Oof. Sarah Hughes and Kelly Kalinske in 2022. Yes. Sarah and Kelly score five straight. So Sarah is on the pier. Kelly's Sorry. not. And I think you got Kelly and Sarah, Kristen Nuss, Taryn Cloth, whose best career finish in Manhattan is a fifth. Mm. And you don't have Melissa Humanoprades and Brandy Wilkerson. And then you have Betsy and Julia trying to defend that. But I think you have the the two biggest favorites coming in on the women's side. It's got to be Kelly, Sarah, and Kristen Terry. Not only are they favorites, but I feel like they're going to come in with a bit of a revenge tour. Yeah. And if I'm the rest of the field, I am mentally preparing for the fire that is coming through the net uh, from those guys. Granted, post-Olympics, they played pretty darn good volleyball olympics they just didn't quite excel um and meet i'm i would say their expectations of kind of what they wanted to do at the olympics uh and it's hard right it's yep. it is the hardest event and so they did it they, they were in the arena they battled uh you know i just don't think they got the finish that they felt satisfied with and so i feel like they're going to come here a little bit of hunger a little bit of chip on the shoulder uh and i'm curious to see how they do i'm excited yeah, I'm always curious how people respond yeah. to, and as you mentioned, it's not, they didn't under, I don't think they mm. underperformed in the Olympics as a whole, because no. they went a combined seven and two. Kelly and That's Sarah win four matches, yeah. you lose one, yep. when Nina Brunner and Tanya Huberly are playing all world. Kristen Nuss, Taryn Cloth, they win pool play, you lose to Melon Brandy, wasn't Kristen and Taryn's best match sure. in that ninth place match, no. but... How do you respond to that? You have the biggest event every four years going straight into the biggest event on the annual calendar. Yes. And I think it's it's just a fascinating peek into the psychology of competitors of how do you bounce back when you don't have a lot of time to bounce back. Not a lot of time. And it's and it's one thing to bounce back after a, a challenger in Poland or a challenger, you know, somewhere in Brazil. But you're coming off the Olympics, which is like two weeks of mental stimulation and being on not only physically but mentally when you're resting you're you're still i'm sure you're still elevated heart rate during that time you know and so there's that olympic factor of coming in and the the highs and lows uh, the post olympic you know come down is probably real uh and I, I would imagine there's conversations with their mental performance coaches about keeping that energy up and resetting here because you can't come in thinking about your last event and, and weighing on or, or wallowing in some of that feeling of because boom, that serve is coming next tournament is here and Manhattan beach is here and it's the biggest one of the year. Yep. And a lot of, a lot of people talk about the sort of post Olympic blues. Yes. Cause you have four years of build up, build up, build up, yeah. and then it happens. And then it's like, Ooh, well, what now? But you don't, you don't have time no. to do the, the what now post Olympic blue thing and neither do all the Europeans. 
no. who are going straight into European straight championships. Into European champs. It's like no rest. <laughs> it's crazy. And granted, yep. we love we love more volleyball. Like as volleyball fans and as players, great more events the better. Europeans get to play more volleyball here in the states. We get to play more volleyball. But again, the challenge is for these teams for the turnaround and what that looks like and how does that work for your team and it's a new experience for some of these teams obviously kelly's been there before sarah mm-hmm. hasn't but taryn and Kristen, new olympic feeling and coming down after four years grinding and then whew, and then maybe maybe it's a little bit of relief for some of these teams where that is now over and yeah. i can breathe again and and get settled back into you know playing volleyball and not having fun but not, not that they weren't having fun but like avp and just like having having a great time yeah and it's uh different ball yes different environment (laughs) and so it'll be it's going to be interesting to see how it changes but i think that for the women it's going to be such a different look because last year almost all the big dog teams were gone in hamburg at that elite 16 and so it made for a really fun mess of a tournament where betsy and julia lose their first round they were the one seed lose to chloe lorene and natalie robinson of washington who are in thursday's qualifiers the one seed Uh, And then they become the first team ever to lose the first round and come back for the win, beat Kelly Klinsky, Haley Harward. And now I think this year it's a little bit more top heavy. Yes. Last year was more of a parody filled event. And now I think this year it's going to get very interesting winners quarterfinals onward, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Different, different tournament this year, uh, at least on the women's side than we saw last year. That's for sure. Yeah. So maybe we covered it, yep. but since we're on the women, I yep. uh, just wanted to see if you had a major storyline that you were looking forward to. Sure. Yeah, and I think for me, the major storyline is the two Olympic teams coming back into this event. And like we just talked about, how do they reset? How do they take the experience from the Olympics, take the good, take the bad, uh, and quickly spin it and, and find a way for it to boost them into this event and maybe it is a little chip on my shoulder. Maybe I have a little bit of revenge. Maybe I'm I'm, I'm trying to, you know, uh, you know, pick up, put a little extra in that maybe I didn't love how I performed at the Olympics. And so I think f- for those two teams, Taryn and uh, TKN, Taryn and Kristen, and Kelly and Sarah, I just don't want to. I wouldn't want to see them across the net. And you're going to have to run into them if you're playing in them. You're going to run into them at some point. But I feel like they're going to be fiery uh, and and focused here in this event. And it's funny because with Kristen and Taryn, it's not often you see them coming off of a disappointing tournament. Correct, correct. And <laughs> they're good enough when they don't have a chip. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And Kristen is one of the most competitive people I've ever met. I don't. I wouldn't want to see Kristen with a little, for with, sure, with a little extra. Yeah, I mean they're constantly smiling on the court, Kristen and Taryn. But are those smiles going to be turning into to angry face AP, yeah. APIs. <laughs> I mean, we see we see Taryn with the Crazy API. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a scary sight. That would be. Yeah, so I'm with you on that one. Yep. Uh, I think the, the Olympic teams coming back is going to be fascinating because there's so many different dynamics at play. One, the Olympic high, you're coming down. We're also changing balls. It's a 32-team double elimination. It's a way different format. Olympics, you play one match every other day. Yep. At the most, now you could play up to three yes. in a day. It's hot, which is also a little bit different. But I, the team that I want to point out is kind of my, not major storyline. We'll do storyline 1A. Uh, Megan Craft, Therese Cannon. I'm glad you said, because I was, I was going to be amiss if, we didn't, if I didn't bring them up yeah. as well. So they, I think, are the sneakiest mm. contender mm-hmm. to put their name on the pier. One, Kristen Taren, Kelly Sarah, obvious contenders. Betsy and Julia, pretty obvious, defending their, getting their name on the pier. And then you got Meg and T., who I think go under everyone's radars because sure. they're so quiet, they're so sweet, and then they're yeah. just badass volleyball oh, players. They're coming off back-to-back medals, a uh, final in Stad, mm-hmm. which it, they should have won. I think if you put them up 8-3 in the third set against Kristen and Taryn 100 times, they got to win 95 of them. Yes. And it just happened to be one of those five that they didn't. Yes. And then they come back, and how do they respond from a pretty devastating collapse in Stad? Well, Correct. they just win a bronze in Vienna. Yeah, no big deal. And another Elite 16. And so they're playing really big-time volleyball. They're going to be well-rested, and I think they're going to be pretty hungry to have a good performance in Manhattan. So that's a sneaky, sneaky good team yes. that I'm looking forward to. Yeah, no, I like that, and... A huge fan of theirs. I think, like you said, they're trending in the right direction. Megan Craft been blocking for four years and is looking like a seasoned veteran defensively. She's long, she's fast, and when she gets her hands on it, 
she can hammer balls down your throat. Mm-hmm. It's kind of scary. She is smooth. I think that Ma- I was actually talking with Julia because we were practicing this week, and I think that Meg and T are one of the best American comparables we have to Nina Brunner and Tanya Hubley. Mm. Because Meg is like that six one, real smooth yeah. physical defender, like Tanya or like Nina yeah. is, and then yep. Therese and Tanya, pretty similar skill set, sure. very physical blockers, pretty good yep. ball control, and so I, I, I like them. I like I that. Like that team. I like that team as well. And I think you know, going more on the women, I'll go to like a one B here, moving down the list just a little bit here. Uh, Jada Whitmarsh, Jada Whitmarsh, and Devin Newberry, yep. kind of my little dark horse team. You know, dark horse. They're sitting at. Uh, 13? 13, yeah, 13 yeah. there in the uh, main draw. But they're playing better and better. They're getting more experience, more international events. They just went to Hamburg where they qualified for King of the Court with some top teams in the world that were there. They qualified, yes, they didn't do stellar in the main draw portion of that event. But when their energy is high and when Jaden is siding out at a really high level, using her vision, I mean, there's times where I'm watching her play and I – I don't know how teams can surf her because she can see you. And then if you do pull, she can swing on you. Uh, she just makes the right decision all the time. And they have great ball control. And then Devin is sneaky, good blocking, long arms, great hands. explosive. They're also working with Jose Loyola. So not a bad guy to not be working with. Guy. Pretty good resume uh, for Coach Loyola there. And so they're kind of my dark horse team to kind of maybe sneak into the top five, maybe a top seven finish. I like that. I uh, I think I've been a big fan of Devin Newberry's game since we went to La Paz together. Oh, yes. And Devin mm-hmm. was a senior in high school with <laughs> Perry Brennan, yep. who has developed into a very good player at UCLA as well. Yes. I was like, this girl's legit. Legit. Yeah, that was a <laughs> long time ago. 17. Yeah, isn't that crazy? And now they're it's it's it is crazy because I feel like we've watched Devin since she was just a legit a kid. Yes. And now she's all grown up and playing with in the big leagues as a professional and I think a legit contender to be making Sunday quarterfinals and yep. on. Yep. And I like uh, I like adding a dark horse. So a couple little storylines I'm just gonna punch on real quick. Yep. Savvy Simo, Abby Van Winkle, huge shout out to them. They won A V P Denver and then they took third in Wapaka and then they won the Virginia tour series. Or con- Contend- well, I don't uh, know. Contender, contender series, sure. Contender yeah. series, contender yeah. series, yeah. So Savvy and Abby, ten seed, dangerous ten, mm. like them a lot. And then the dark horse team, I want to make sure that we touch on is Devin Sowers and Carly Khan. So Devin Sowers, I don't think hardly anyone in the beach world has heard of yet. Mm-hmm. So she qualified for her first main draw in Huntington Beach with Maureen Kinna, who's playing with Maddie May Anderson, and they're going to be a really good team in the qualifier. That's a good team. Um, so Devin played indoor at New Mexico, and it was one of their best outside hitters, played professionally in Hungary, got her master's there, and so she's back. She's in New Orleans. So think about the year that New Orleans is having Ooh. right now. So you got Evan Corey, yes. winner of Denver, winner of Wapaka, you got Kristen Taren. They need no introduction. Nope. Then you got Devin Sowers, also performing very well. So New Orleans. Trending. You got something in the water. Maybe the new, there. Maybe the new South Bay <laughs> of the East Coast there. Yeah. Uh, something over there in the bayou. Yeah, so Devin Sowers. And I got to give a uh, shout out to Danny Alvarez, Mr. Belly Diggs, the most honorable unmentioned coach in the world. Belly Diggs coaches Carly Khan. Carly Khan has been uh, – so I've had a – every year I do the postseason awards and I have Mrs. Underrated. Mm. It's called the Carly Khan Award. She's so damn good. She's so good. Uh, AVP champion, Carly Khan. Yep. Jen Ketty back in... Uh, Tavares. Tavares. 22? 22, yes. Yeah, Tavares 22. Yeah, Carly Khan, AVP champion. And every time I watch her play, she A, she's just the sweetest girl. Uh, but she's a beast. And mm-hmm. she touches the ball better than a lot, of t- a lot of players out there. She's smarter than a lot of players out there. She's springy. She makes the right decision. She just gets the job done. And I, I don't – you wouldn't want to see her on the other side of the net. That's no. for sure. My favorite Carly Kahn story among many. So she gets recruited to go to Missouri as a libero. And during practice, it was it was one of those times where you had maybe eight hours of practice. And so it would be a lot of captain's practices with just the players. And so the coach asked how to go. And they said, well, Carly played outside. And Carly never played libero ever again at Mizzou. So she, and she left Mizzou as the all-time leader in kills. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So that's Carly Khan. <clears throat> and haven't even mentioned April Ross, Alex Kleiman. Yes. So the I think the version that we saw of April and Alex in Huntington 
is going to be a drastically different version that we're going to see in Manhattan because April was just six months postpartum. Yeah. And now we have three more months of uh-huh. recovery. I've seen it in person with how much more prepared Delaney was after having Austin from six months to sure. nine. It's a radically different yeah. story. And so April is going to be a radically different player, as is Alex. And it's crazy to look at April and Alex as like an underdog. Underdog, I guess. When you're gold medalist, it's kind of an insult to ever say that. Right. But unfortunately for them, they had kids. Awesome. And they both know they're not at 100% where they'd like to be at this point in their stages in recovery. But like you said, I've practiced with them recently, and there is an improvement, a drastic improvement from where they were in Huntington Beach. Yes. Yep. And so one last wrap up on the women a couple teams to watch elena chacon mariah whalen very athletic yes. explosive ball control scrappy gritty really good team primed to make some upsets happen ashley pater sarah wood ashley pater is going to usc going to be a very good talent to follow sarah wood i hope we can get you at florida state <laughs> would love to have you in tallahassee mm-hmm. that's a good team and I think that will do it for the women for now. It's also just great to see Lindsay Sparks playing beach volleyball yes, again. Yes. She had what was thought to be a career-ending injury in Pottstown. Tour, well, all the CLs were gone. Ugh. I don't even know. ACL, MCL, PCL, all the things. Then she went out and finished her college career at Cal Poly. Yep. Might still have a year left. Mm. Either way, she's back on the beach. Good to see her. She qualified in Denver with Piper Furch. So that'll be, if you haven't seen Lindsay play, it's clear that she was taught by Stein Metzger because she has some of the best poke control on the mm. beach, leader in the league in poke kills. There you go. So that's what I got for the women. Kyle, yeah. do you have anything left before we move on to the men? Nada. Nope. That's it. You're good. Good work. All right. Good coverage. So we covered the women. That was a solid, solid 17 minutes. Awesome. Perfect. And now we're going to move on to the men. Kyle Friend, what's the biggest storyline you're watching for the men? Hmm, that's a good question. So, biggest storyline for me for the men, uh, I'm I'm like fascinated to see Trevor and Theo on the sand here in this tournament. There was a lot of talk in between events here about after their post Olympic run, not making it to the pinnacle, just coming up short. Credit to Chase and Miles for pushing them and being in the bottom of the race and then grinding their way back up and getting there and, and kind of taking that spot away from Trevor and Theo, which again, credit to those guys for putting in the work. Uh, Theo and Trevor have not, hadn't been on the same page for the last couple months from what I had heard. And so I'm curious to see how they look coming out here in this Manhattan beach event. They are the one seed. We know Trevor has his name on the pier already a few times. He's going to be hungry for more. Can they, keep it together for another event here or another two events uh i'm curious to see how they look out on the sand and we know they can play good volleyball if they're not on the same page uh so it doesn't mean you can go in there and be like oh these guys they're not getting along very well we're gonna beat them like no that's not the case they're too darn good they're too theo's too good of a blocker they're too good of siding out machines um so i'm curious to see how they do uh, in this event, it's kind of like my number one storyline, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, well, Trev's proven he can get his name on the pier with a guy he doesn't get along with. Absolutely. Him and Reed Pretty. Absolutely. Notoriously, uh, famously not friends. And then they got together and yeah. they won split blocking. Crazy. And it was, I mean, I think still to this day, probably Trevor's best, certainly most interesting win. Most interesting. <laughs> yes. But I did see Trev and Theo practicing again together today. First time I've seen them on the court together. There you go. I, I had been practicing with Trevor the last couple of weeks because Theo was in Greece. Uh, and so we were doing a little split blocking, just having, having some fun, getting out. And then Theo came back. Uh, there, has, there has been a lot of time for them to kind of re, refine their groove here. So yeah. as the one seed target will be on their back, obviously the Taylors. In my mind, they're coming in pretty carefree. Not that they normally don't come in carefree to events, but they've already won Huntington. They're already in the league, as they said. Uh, They've booked their tickets, so they kind of have nothing to lose. Uh, So they're going to be out here firing balls and and the granddaddy for those those boys. Yeah, so Trevor Crabb trying to get his name on the pier for the fourth time. Tay, who beat Trevor Mm -hmm. in a very good final last year. It was their quarterfinal that I think was probably the AVP match of the year last year. That was electric. The line went all the way from the stadium to the strand. Yeah. 
I just want to see another another crab feast. It's not a crab boil, guys. It's it's a crab feast. I'm from Maryland. I got my Maryland there flag go. shorts let, on. Let the, the crab fans feast. know because everyone says a crab boil, and I'm I'm glad you clarify that because I almost said crab boil there. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you. You heard that first here from Maryland local crab feast. Crab feast. I hope crab we get feast. another crab feast. I'm so interested to see Miles Pertain and Andy Benish. Sure. I think that uh, on paper the three seed, everyone knows that they're the one seed. Yeah. They're the best team in the United States, sure. and I still don't know if it's particularly close. There was so much chatter about their style of play. In Paris, they went from basically not optioning and jump setting to going full send on the options and jump sets. And So Betsy and Julia, we practiced with Chloe Robinson and uh, – or Chloe Lorraine and Natalie Robinson today. Yep. Right behind us was Andy and Miles. And, man, watching those guys in person is such a different – story they just make volleyball look so freaking easy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i was watching i was like okay they're my favorites <laughs> i wasn't <laughs> sure after paris and the way that, that match against qatar went but I, I think i'm it'll be good to see andy and miles back playing against american opponents again because i think people have forgotten how good they are. how good they are yeah and i think we've like you said people have forgotten when you're playing the best teams in the world it is hard. <laughs> it is hard to do what you want to do on the court because those teams are out there to make you uncomfortable. They're serving in positions to get you out of option rhythm. They know you don't pass well. Your, their statistics tell them that you don't pass well uh, one step left to your sideline. And so guess what? You're going to get 80% of the balls to that exact spot because these teams are so precise. Mm-hmm. Um, and we, we've known their dominance on the AVP and how good they can be. And, and I agree with you. They are my favorite. They are my team to win. I talked with Andy after he, you guys left. I saw them. I saw yeah. Andy and walked and talked, talked to him for a little bit. And he was in great spirits. I'm like, how's the body feeling? He's like, good. Yeah, feeling good. I'm like, awesome. You know? And so he sounded really good. And I was like, all right, these guys are back. Oh, yeah. They're, they're going to be good. They're yeah. going to be good. So I expect, uh, I expect their name on the pier. All right, yep. Kyle's picking Andy and Miles. Yep. At this point, on the AVP, I, I have a rule which may be amended. On the Beach Pro Tour, you don't bet against Norway. I'm going to tweak that to you don't bet against Scandinavia. <laughs> Looping Sweden into that. Yeah, you just got to loop all of Scandinavia. <laughs> on the AVP, you don't bet against Andy and Miles. They had yeah. two losses the entire season last year. One was in the finals of Chicago. So, yeah, I don't bet against Andy and Miles. <clears throat> that said... I think one of my one of my storylines I think a lot of people are interested in is who is Ryan Wilcox? Who's Ryan Wilcox? So and- Ryan Wilcox, Triborn's new partner. They came out, debuted. Can't ask for a better debut. It's pretty Go good. out, win Virginia. It's pre- exactly what you want to do. And even before then, they technically debuted at the King Crab of the Beach. And so yes. Tri wins his pool against Wilcox, funny enough, and then wins his next pool. So he gets his draft. And instead of Taylor Crabb, instead of Sean Cook, instead of Cody Caldwell and Nicholas Senny, he's like, I want my boy Ryan Wilcox. Trevor picks up the bug, who wins? Try and Wilcox. They then parlay that into a win in Virginia Beach, which is hilarious because that's the first time Tri's ever had to qualify for an AVP. Yeah. And so he qual- I texted him, I was like, hey, congratulations on the win and all, but big congrats on qualifying. qualifying. Welcome back to the main draw. Welcome back. <laughs> I mean, we both know that first feeling of qualifying, and Tri has been lucky and fortunate to have put himself in a position that he hadn't needed to mm-hmm. qualify before because he's so damn good. And I usually, I'm in his seat right now usually, and he is. this is a nice seat. And he is, <laughs> he's very good at his job of playing beach volleyball. That yep. is for dang sure. Yeah, and I'm excited to see, for people to see, how good Wilcox is. Mm-hmm. At beach volleyball, because coming in his first couple of practices, I was like, all right, he's pretty small, but man, he's got a good arm. Yeah, good arm. And then I learned that he's a four-time All-American at a UCSB. Uh-huh. And try at the beginning of the year, we do fan question episodes, and we were asked if we could play a tournament with kind of a young up-and-coming player. Try said Ryan Wilcox, and he said because he's kind of it reminds him a lot of Taylor Crab. Yeah, <laughs> and his college accolades are really similar, and his style of play is really similar. He's mm-hmm. just got this undersized, fast arm mentality. I mean, he's a 6'2 outside hitter. Yeah. And it's just, it was a four-time All-American as a 6'2 outside hitter. you got to do something pretty special. Yeah. Four-time All-American is difficult to do, especially yeah. when the kids these days are all six foot six and above at outside hitter positions. They're growing them big. They are large, mm-hmm. and it's hard to find the success like Taylor Crabb did at Long Beach State, being player of the year, four-time All-American, in his role uh, as I was one of my his teammates for a year and he came in as a freshman when I was a senior and 
he was one of the best guys on the floor. And I was like, gosh, darn it. Who's this guy? Like, it was my senior year. I want to play. And he was really good. But yeah, Wilcox, uh, super good. And it's funny, that tournament that Trevor ran, I don't think Trevor really realized that that might have been the little practice run and, and little boost of confidence that gave his old partner, Triborn, and his new partner, Ryan Wilcox, a little yep. bit of push, a little bit of confidence, a little bit of momentum into Virginia Beach. Yep. I mean, if they don't play that event, they might, they might still get the same result. But we will never know that. But if never anything, that. a win against really good teams playing with a bunch of different people helps your confidence. A helps lot. your style of play, gets you and try playing some good teams, you know, against Taylor, the best one of the best defenders we have in the States, mm -hmm. and Trevor, one of the best players we have. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Trevor, I'm going to reevaluate that tournament. <laughs> <laughs> so Tri was happy to take mm -hmm. home money. Uh, another storyline I'm looking at yep. is, among many, Evan, Corey, and Allison. Yeah, that's where I was going next, too. So Evan and Allison, they win Denver. Win Wapaka, and actually, I was laughing with Try about this. I was like, "Hold on, all right." So, I've been coaching Evan, coaching Try. I was like, "We had a clean sweep of uh, my boys had a clean sweep of the contenders." I was like, "All right, now we need a, now we need a big dog." Uh, hey, <laughs> fist bump to that, my guy, <laughs> coach, stepping into your role really nicely. Yeah, just and flowing into it. Your team's, you know, uh, listening to your words ever so closely and coming out <laughs> on top. So, I, if anything, it has to do a lot of the coaching. Yeah, I'll take at least <laughs> at least full credit. At least full credit. <laughs> At least full credit. But no, I agree. Evan and Elisone won Denver, and did they win? One with Paca. And one with Paca. Correct. So I think there was an adjustment period for those two guys to play together. I think Evan adjusting to Elisone's setting, the bump setting, the very high ball, and the patience required for defenders and someone like Evan who can go up and absolutely bang balls and finding the rhythm with your partner, and then boom, getting a couple wins under your belt. I don't think you can not count them out for being in the semifinals, even though they are the ten. the 10 seed. I think there's a really good chance that, A, they can beat any one of these teams, in my opinion. Uh, and also, and we know, is one of the best walkers we've seen all time and can cause havoc for teams. And then if Evan is passing the ball well and, and it's not super windy and also is setting well, Evan can hammer balls over and around anybody on the tour. Yep. And so, Evan, I know that, a lot of fans will say, "Well, it was Denver and Wapaka. It wasn't. It wasn't that strong of a field. It was loaded <sighs> it for, was hard. for that level." For I, the men. I think, and I was talking with Evan and Trevor and Try about this actually, where I think that the field that Evan and Allison had to beat in Denver was stronger than the field that Try and Kane beat in New Orleans. But Evan and Allison won't have like a quote unquote real AVP win sure. because it was a contender series. But they had to beat the Taylors in the finals of Denver. Yep. Had to beat the Taylors in the quarterfinals of Wapaka. You had to beat Sean and Cody. So you had the two finalists from Huntington were in both Denver and mm -hmm, Wapaka. Mm -hmm. And Evan and Allison navigated a field that included both of them twice. Twice. And so and we know that Allison is not afraid of big stages. Nope. I think he, in my mind, he's my number two men's player of all time. He won Olympic gold, won Olympic silver. Yeah. He knows how to play in big matches. And you talk about confidence. Evan Corey is not a guy who lacks in confidence and you put him on a big stage with some confidence after back to back wins after a great experience in Brazil. Yeah. It's a dangerous 10 seed. Yeah. No, I wouldn't want to see them across the net. And like you said, they spent oh, like a month in Brazil training and getting better. And like, like you said, multiple wins, building their team chemistry, getting the dynamic better, figuring out little areas in which they can support each other. They're putting in the work and it's, it's showing and, they're going to make a statement, I think, in Manhattan Beach. Yep. I like I like them a lot. Yep. Now, we mentioned dark horses for the women. Yep. Are, are Evan and Allison your dark horse for the men? Evan and Allison are my dark horse for yep. the men. Yeah, they're my dark horse. I think 10 seed, that qualifies. So we mentioned the Basie brothers <clears throat> in Huntington. They are the 17 seed. That is Lars Basie and Gage Basie from Lions, Colorado. Ball control wizards. Highly recommend you watch them. But my dark horse goes to Petey and Steve. Steve Roschitz and Pete Connell, man. When I watch them, when I watch them warm up, I'm like, "Holy shit! These guys are the greatest beach volleyball players I've ever seen." <laughs> and they can make some spectacular plays. And when they lose, I'm always left sort of confused, like, "How did that happen?" Sure. And I've beaten, I beat them in Muskegon, and I remember after, I remember seeing the draw, and I was like, "Shoot." This sucks yeah. to see them this early in the tournament. And then after we beat him, I was like, 
How do we do that? How do we do that? Super physical. Yes. Great servers. Sweet hands. Good ball control. That's a. I think they're nineteen. That's a nineteen seed qualified through Denver. They took third. Should have beat Evan and Alisson. For all being honest, they had two match points against them in the second set. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Didn't take advantage. Got to do that. That's a good nineteen seed. Dangerous nineteen. Yeah, they've been playing for a long time. They know how to touch the ball. They're both very creative. I think uh, Pete, as a blocker in his size, he has a very crafty wrist. He's got a range of shots, and he's sneaky powerful. And Steve, oh, he can hammer with his right. Also can hammer with his left. Uh, he's, he had a, some, some arm stuff going on last couple of years, and so he was playing a lot of ball with his left, jump serving with his left, playing he with his left. He hits left harder than I do. Oh, yeah. I don't <laughs> no, want to say not it. saying much, but <laughs> at least left-handed dominant. <laughs> uh, but, no, I, I like those guys. They're great guys, and, you know, they've been, you know, grinding a little on and off here and there and have had success a couple of years ago and then kind of faded a little bit. And I feel like they're, they're kind of finding their rhythm again and a little bit of confidence. And so I'm interested to see how they do in this event. Yep. So that's my dark horse, Steve and Pete. Also, uh, Leela Tucker, DJ Klasnich, yeah. dangerous team, a little ball control team. And Be- then got to give some love to my guy, JM Plummer. Good to see Jam and, and Andrew Dentler, East coast, East coast, buddy. Back in the main draw, they qualified through Wapaka. So that is all I got for the men. Kyle Friend, you got anything else to add? No, I kind of agree with you. Leela and DJ being the Taylors last year in Chicago. Uh, and then Tim and I had the unfortunate uh, benefit of playing the Taylors after they beat them, which dream was a draw. dream draw. Great dream draw. So, again, DJ, undersized blocker, doesn't really matter because they both play such good volleyball that you, they get it done. Um, yeah, I think you kind of covered it. That's that's all I got for the men here. How nice is it, by the way, to just be sitting here and you're like, there's a qualifier mm, Thursday and I, know. I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Going to practice today, helping Tim and Jake uh, in this weekend at NBO and I'm just sitting there watching them warm up, having my water, you know, staying in the shade. Okay, you guys are doing great playing against Logan. Hey, you guys are doing great. All right, want a little <laughs> chat. It's hot out here. I got my, got my sandals walking back and forth, yep. coaching. I'm like, well, it's hot. I don't know if I can go barefoot this weekend. <laughs> it's going to be tough out here as a coach. Sounds like the coach life is the good life. It's a good life. Yeah. I'm happy. Pretty, it's not stress free, but you don't, I'm not sitting here like, shoot, my platform was off today and I got two days to write or I'm going to embarrass myself. I'm like, oh, my platform sucks today and no one cares. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. All good. Kyle, friend, appreciate you. Uh, helping out with the show we're just oh, yeah. uh we're trying to turn you into a reporter now you're retired so you're a journalist guy Beach I'm, a media, man. I'm just trying to follow in your footsteps trying to learn as much as i can from you and just take little notes of the journalism <laughs> major over here and yeah it's great it's been fun being on here fans thanks for tuning in and, and listening to us just chat about volleyball uh i love it yeah well, let's keep building this thing uh all info updates brackets avp.com I believe the streaming is on the AVP YouTube page, and then the semis and finals are on Ion. Oh, I believe I'm I not 1,000% sure what Ion is, but I believe that that is the update. I think they sent a press release out. But early stages will be on the AVP's YouTube channel. So we will see you on the beach. Come say hi to the boys and uh, just chat volley. We're here for it. I'll be coaching Betsy and Julia and Try and Wilcox, so I will hopefully be having a slammed slammed weekend long weekend for you all yeah. all the way to sunday yeah double pure plaque would be a big week oh my goodness <laughs> you just retire you just retire from coaching i, I just go straight to fsu and be like i'm done with the pros I'm done with it. these guys yeah. i got two plaques in one of them <laughs> yeah. all right we'll go Knowles and uh see you in manhattan and shoots later